Hi, I'm Carlos Santaguida, spine neurosurgeon at McGill University, and thank you for allowing me the opportunity to discuss post-operative uh, hematomas and after cervical surgery. Here are my disclosures. I'll begin with a case from my own practice of a 67-year-old gentleman with myelopathy and DISH. He underwent a multi-level decompression and fusion. He had a good neurologic improvement for the first three days, and then shortly after the drain was removed, he started having deterioration in his hand function. An MRI was performed, and he was found to have a hematoma, which was then evacuated urgently, and he proceeded to improve the baseline, and then uh, six months following surgery, he continued to improve neurologically. So today I'll uh, briefly discuss a classification system of a hematoma, so at least broadly speaking, and then some risk factors, prevention, and treatment strategies. It's important to differentiate uh, retropharyngeal hematomas from epidural hematomas. Uh, of course, retropharyngeal hematomas uh, are a feared complication, can lead to airway compromise. As it comes to epidural hematomas, they can occur anteriorly and posteriorly. Posterior epidural hematomas are more common, uh, and they can appear in an acute setting within the first 24 hours, or even in a delayed setting, it's been well described, to have uh, symptomatic epidural hematomas uh, posteriorly, uh, that could occur several days after surgery. And at that time, it's not really uh, top of mind to, to consider this complication. So it's important to keep that in mind. Uh, I'm sure delayed uh, epidural hematomas can occur anteriorly. They're, they're just less, dis less commonly described in the literature. I'll begin with this large multi-centered retrospective uh, study that found that the prevalence of symptomatic epidural hematomas after cervical surgery was 0.09%, so fairly rare. Uh, if the hematomas were evacuated uh, within 24 hours uh, without delay, 66% of the patients recovered to the neurologic baseline. If it was delayed uh, over 24 hours, only 33% improved. So this is clearly time sensitive, and there is a capacity to improve. There is a suggestion in this paper that the patients that had this complication didn't have a full uh, recovery that one would expect after a myelopathy uh, surgery, uh, but most were not worse after the event. Uh, the incidence of these bleeds are higher uh, with posterior surgery versus anterior surgery. Drains are a bit of a controversy, uh, particularly in my own group. There's huge variability in practice. Uh, there's individuals that put drains in almost every patient, and there's others that, that rarely do. Uh, this uh, paper uh, that I was presenting here is a retrospective study, um, a large retrospective study of just ACDF patients. And in their population, uh, none of the patients had a symptomatic hematoma. So it's hard to really draw any conclusions. And that's, an, that's a consistent problem with the literature related to this complication. It's so rare, it's so hard to study. So a lot of studies are underpowered to really see a difference of an intervention. Uh, and it's important to keep that in mind uh, when, when you're uh, reading through uh, systematic uh, reviews of this particular problem that many of the studies really don't even have too many uh, events documented. Uh, so they're not really powered to demonstrate much difference. But that being said, within this group, they found that uh, drains uh, increased the length of stay and there was more blood loss for these patients. That being said, the population with drains were quite different. There was more levels at the time of surgery and also the surgeries were longer. So they're probably uh, patients that um, differed quite a bit from the simple single and two level uh, ACDFs. Uh, so it's important to keep that in mind though, if you are um, performing a single or two level ACDF, recognize that a drain will likely increase the length of stay. Uh, risk factors that lead to high drainage output as a surrogate for potentially these patients are, will bleed more or more likely to have epidural hem hematomas perhaps, where it was age over 50, smokers, and the number of levels that were included at the time of surgery. Interestingly, in this paper, corpectomies didn't increase the amount of drainage uh, um, in patients that have had to drain after an anterior cervical approach. If we take a tangent towards uh, uh, lumbar uh, literature, this is very small RCT that did not have any clinically symptomatic uh, epidural hematomas, but they did uh, do an MRI early on, and they found that 90% of their patients after lumbar decompression had a epidural hematoma if there was no drain inserted. And only 30% had an epidural hematoma if a drain was inserted. 
And so the drains are doing something at least early on. Uh, it's just a question of whether that's clinically significant. But it's a reminder uh, that uh, an early uh, MRI in an asymptomatic patient uh, can often demonstrate uh, uh, an epidural hematoma, uh, and it may have a very limited uh, clinical significance. Uh, so, so it's important to keep that in mind if you're you know, imaging C a C5 palsy after surgery, you might not be happy with what you see. A systematic review of the use of drains in um, all spine patients did not demonstrate any uh, benefit or any reduction in epidural hematomas. It was important for me to remind everyone that many of those studies that are included really did not have enough events to really determine a difference of an intervention or not. A, a chemo a thromboprophylaxis or DVT prophylaxis, uh, according to this meta-analysis, did not uh, clearly demonstrate an increase in the rate of epidural hematomas and is likely safe. There are some risk factors we control as surgeons. Uh, perioperative uh, NSAIDs um, that inhibit a platelet function um, or uh, you know, coagulopathic states that could be reversed. This will uh, obviously lead to more epidural hematomas. Uh, Multi-level laminectomies and posterior surgery is more likely to lead to epidural hematoma. So the, some of these risk factors are modifiable in terms of what surgical technique one chooses. So some takeaway uh, points. Drains are not a substitute for thorough hemostasis. There are many examples of um, a, a clinically symptomatic epidural hematomas occurring with a drain in place. Drains have not been proven to be effective, but they've also not been proven to be ineffective. Uh, and so I, I think it's important that, uh, to, to recognize that and not discount the value of them um, in, in certain subsets of patients that may be at a higher risk of bleeding. Perioperative NSAIDs that inhibit platelet function can increase your risk, DVT prophylaxis less so. Uh, MRIs in asymptomatic patients will often reveal hematomas, so one should be cautious with this. Uh, emergent evacuation and often will improve patients to a, a baseline neurologic function, and this is obviously very time sensitive. In my own experience, for what it's worth, as a, a surgeon that's been in practice for uh, five years, uh, I do not provide, I, I ensure that my patients are, aren't taking any NSAIDs that impede in platelet function, uh, pre-op or post-op after cervical surgery. Uh, drains for anterior surgery are only really reserved for infection cases, tr um, some traumas or uh, cancer. Uh, they just tend to have a higher bleeding risk. Uh, some of my larger constructs may have a drain if there's a lot of dead space, uh, but I would almost never use it in a single or two level ACDF. Uh, I do use drains for all my posterior fusions. I just think there's so much dead space there and it's very hard to get uh, good hemostasis with the uh, muscle edges because of the uh, dissection that's involved in fusing that segment. Um, and uh, in terms of um, what to do when the hematomas do happen, just in my own experience, if it's very early on, I'll usually um, take the patient back to the OR even without imaging with the presumptive diagnosis of hematoma. But if there's a delayed deterioration, much like the case I presented, I'll, I tend to image first. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>